So I'm going to go over the differences between the internet and the World Wide Web. Very, very commonly these two terms are used interchangeably. They don't mean the exact same thing. I want to go into why. This will be a very simplistic description, but it will probably serve you really well. So here's the main difference. I've written up here, by the way, everything related to the internet in black, everything related to the web or the World Wide Web in blue. Now I want to cover, first of all, just in simple terms what they are. The internet is connected networks. Connected networks. What does that mean? Well, you've got a network of computers. Here they are. They're all connected to each other. They can combine for processing power. They can get things done a little more quickly because they all work together. That's a network. You've already covered that a little bit. Well, you have a network that's in, let's say, oh, I don't know, Los Angeles. And then you could have another network that's in, say, Menlo Park, California. This isn't hypothetical. One of the very first examples of the internet had locations in both of those points. So you have this network that's in Los Angeles. You have a network over in Menlo Park. And they exist and they're not connected. They just happen to be there, people putting them together. What if you want them to communicate to each other? Well, you could actually lay physical hardware, physical wiring, not the telephone lines, not power lines, not anything else that exists. You could connect them with an actual physical wire across all that distance, whatever 400 miles that happens to be, right? That, with a couple of additions that I'll describe in a moment, is the internet. Except multiply this now times thousands, if not millions and millions of networks that are connected in a huge giant spider web sort of arrangement all around the planet. But when it comes down to it, you have a network physically connected to a network. More on that in a minute. But that's the backbone of the internet in that it's physical hardware, actual machines that are connected in one place to each other and then through some wiring over to another network of computers somewhere else. Now, it isn't enough to have this connection. You also have to define how do I transfer information over it? And you might think, well, why? We're just going to send information, but you're sending different types of information. For example, if you want to send an electronic message, email, that's what electronic, email, what email is, it's an electronic message. If you want to send it from a computer over here in Los Angeles over to a computer up the way in Menlo Park, you want to be able to define at both ends what's the data going to look like that I send over this wire? How's it going to be structured so that at the other end that receives it, they know how to pull it apart and see what's there? That is called a protocol. A protocol is just a set of agreements or an arrangement or a system for doing things. And you need it for all the different types of data that's going to transfer over this physical medium from one network to another. Some of the examples of different protocols that you may have heard of are right here. I'll explain what each one of these is in a moment. But the essential thing to know is a protocol is just a definition for how we structure data and how we break it down, send it across some distance, and then reconstruct it at the other end. That right there, the hardware and the protocols, that's the internet. The internet is the hardware and protocols that are used to have an interconnected system of networks. Okay, good. So let's break into this protocol thing a little more. So protocols, again, it's just an agreement or a definition for how you're going to structure data for transfer. Some of the ones you've seen before are, uh, or heard of probably are internet protocol. This is the senior sort of level of protocols. It's the one that everything else bases their point of view on in terms of a protocol for transferring data over the internet. One of the ones that works quite closely from that is transfer control protocol. So transfer control protocol, well, what's that? Well, what are you gonna do with this data? You're gonna take, let's say, we're gonna take an example. We have here a, an email message. And by the way, this protocol itself, simple mail transmission protocol. Simple mail transmission protocol, right? Is another one we're gonna to get to in a second. But regardless of which one of these are, you have a bunch of data structured, however it is, you need to send it over that wire to another computer at the other end in another network. Well, you've got to take the data and break it down into tiny pieces. Send it over the wire, those pieces get captured and they get reconstructed into whatever it is that you sent. 
That's essentially how it works in very simple terms. These little pieces of data are called packets. Like, you know, a little packet, like a little envelope. You know, you open up a packet of something, okay? A packet of chips or whatever. These are packets of data. And what they are is the big piece of data, the big overall thing that you're trying to send, gets broken into these little bitty pieces and then sent one at a time over the wire and received at the other end and then put them back together again into whatever it is that you really wanted to send. That, that's how data transmission works, okay? So transfer control protocol, that is the senior sort of protocol for any time you're gonna send data, how do you go about breaking down these little packets, sending it over the wire and then reconstructing it at the other end? Good. And then there's hypertext transfer, uh, transfer protocol. Hypertext transfer. Well, hypertext we're gonna to get to in a second because that's actually what the web is all about. But there's a protocol for how do you do that? How do you send documents that contain hypertext over these physical wires from one network to another, okay? And then there's file, oh, hold on a second, there's hypertext transfer protocol. And then there's this one I said, which is simple mail transmission protocol. And then this one is file transfer protocol. And this one is voice over internet protocol. These kind of you know tell you what they're all about in their names. Simple mail transfer protocol is sending email. File transfer protocol, file transmission protocol, sorry, this is file transfer protocol. This is how you take a large file and break it down and send it. Good. And then voice over internet protocol, how do you take a voice signal, turn it into a signal that can actually be sent over the wires and then reconstruct at the other end so it can play out of a speaker or whatever and you can hear what the person said. Good. So there's a bunch of protocols. Step back for a second, and again, big picture. The internet is the hardware, the interconnected networks, the connecting wires, and the protocols. The agreements about how we're gonna send different types of data along the way. Now, why do you need different protocols for different types of data? Because you wanna optimize the way the data is deconstructed, sent over, and reconstructed based on the type of data that's gonna be sent. Here's an example. Simple mail transmission protocol. You're going to have inside an email message things that we're all quite familiar with. You're gonna have a session that, who are you sending it to? Who's it from? What's the subject and what's the body? What are you trying to say? Well, if you format your data in this exact order, never switching the order around, never switching the name of any one of these things, it's very easy when you send that for the computers at the other end to analyze it, take it apart and figure out what it's supposed to be. If you, however, take subject and you have a space right between it and the colon, right here, when it gets to the other end, whatever machine is trying to break this apart and figure out what's in there, make it really confused because it expects the word subject and the colon right afterwards. You break that up and now you've messed it up. It can't, you can't actually go through your message and be able to present it the right way. So now, on to the web and what the difference is. Well, if the internet is the physical hardware and the protocols, the agreements about sending data over it, the web is one thing that can be sent over those. What it specifically is, is linked up hypertext documents. Now you covered hypertext, here's a bit of an example. Here's an example hypertext document, it's called All About Dogs. Now, I've used underlines here to indicate words on there that are hypertext. Hyper meaning above and beyond, meaning if you click on that thing, it takes you beyond the document that you're in to another one. In this case, you have all about dogs, here's a table of contents, TOC for table of contents. You could click on the word breeds, you go to another document that's linked to this document. This would be a breeds document. Or you could look at diets here, click on that, it would take you to another document that's linked to this one called the diet document. Here's a gallery of pictures. You can click on the word pictures, it would take you to a linked document that had a bunch of pictures in it. That is the web. Linked hypertext, do hypertext documents. Now obviously, it's huge <laughs> with an unbelievable number of documents that are all linked together, but that's essentially what it is. 
So what do you need to make this kind of thing work? Well, you need a physical connection around the world to be able to send these things over to you, to store the documents where you want to, and have somebody else who says, hey, I want to look up that document about dogs, to be able to retrieve it and display it on their computer. So now let's look at that. There's a piece of software called a browser. You're all quite familiar with these. Examples are Internet Explorer. Let me write this in blue because this makes a bit more sense. We're talking about the web. Internet Explorer, Chrome, Firefox, there are others. It's a piece of software. What's its job? Well, its job is to send out requests wherever these documents happen to be stored, saying, hey, my user would like to see that document. Could you send it over to me? I'll display it on his screen. So they use the physical hardware of the internet to send a request from one computer that has this browser on it. The request goes across these wires to wherever the actual files are stored and it sends it back. Now where are the files stored? In a special kind of computer called a web server. It serves up web pages. It serves up these documents, they're called web pages. So the request goes from this piece of software called a browser on a specific person's computer over the internet, over to a computer called a web server, and the web server finds the document in question and sends that document electronically back over to the browser, and the browser displays it in the screen, and you see all about dogs and everything on that page. And if you were to click with your, from your browser on one of these pieces of text that's a hyperlink, it would send another request over to find the linked document over here on the web server. It would send that one back over, and that's how you would navigate the web. So, big picture again. The internet itself is physical hardware, these networks that are connected to other networks. So, the web is linked hypertext, hypertext documents. It's a whole network of them that happens to use the physical hardware of the internet to be able to accomplish the linking. One final thing, this is no longer always a physical wire. We have things called wireless. You have big towers that are up in the air and you can send signals to them and they send them on to other towers. and eventually they connect up to the networks. Now what typically happens is you'll have a network, you'll have a short period of, of space where it's physical hardware, and then there's a, a machine that can actually convert it to signals that these towers can, have, can use, and those towers keep connecting it one tower to the next until it gets over where it can actually hit physical wires again. The point is, conceptually, it's just a physical connection. In fact, at this point, because of technology advances, it isn't always physical. You can send those signals through the air. So, there you go.